Okay, I wanted to do a quick tutorial today on how you can distress objects and fonts in Silhouette Studio. So the first thing you're going to do is go to Google and you're going to Google distressed background. So we're going to do distressed background. And then I'm going to click on images up here. And you can pick any of these images you want. It's really going to depend on kind of what kind of distress that you're looking for. Um, so for this tutorial, I'm going to just pick this one right here. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy image. Then I can just close that out. And then I'm going to open Silhouette Studio back up, right click and paste. There you've got your image. Of course, you see it's very small. You can stretch that out to whatever size you feel comfortable working with. All right, so click off that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trace this image. So you're going to go over here to the little butterfly. And you're going to just draw a square. Whoops. You're going to hit select trace area. Then you're going to draw a square around your background. I always have it on solid fill. You can see the yellow areas. Those are going to be the areas that will be your distress. So those little yellow areas are the places where your design is going to be taken away from. You can change that by upping your threshold and you can take it to where you like the look of the pattern that you're getting for the distress. You don't want to go too high because you don't want great big chunks coming out, but you want to have enough little pieces here and there that it actually looks distressed. So I'm going to take this Let's see. I'm going to leave that right there at 62% on the threshold. You're going to come down here to the butterfly and hit trace. Okay, so once the yellow goes away and you see the red, that means it's been traced. So you can just reach in there, grab that background out from behind there. You can right click that and delete. You won't need that anymore. Now you're going to come back over here and I always turn this into a color. I usually use black. So I'm just going to come up here and pick my fill color and also change my line color. And so now we have that's what's going to create our distress look. And you can stretch this out as much as you need to depending on what it is you're distressing and what you want that to look like. I'm going to leave that right there for now, but I may want to stretch it out here in just a little bit. Let me move that out of the way. And for uh, just informational purposes, I'm going to go to my Silhouette library and you can see that I typed in baseball. So I'm going to use this baseball right here. It comes in two pieces, so I'm going to click on that, right click and ungroup. I don't need the red part, so I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to stretch this out so you can see. Now on this baseball, you can see where the strings would be. It's open, so that means that your shirt color or whatever it, you're putting it on is going to show through there. And that's what I wanted for the shirt that I was designing, how I first figured this out. So I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm going to leave that red ring around there so it helps us see the baseball a little bit better. And I want to just rotate this a little bit. Just because that's how I wanted the, the ball placed on the shirt when I was making the shirt. Alright, so I'm going to click off that. Now I'm going to grab my background or my distress and I'm going to bring it over here 
but I need to right click and bring to front. That way we can tell where on the baseball the distress is going to be. And I know that I want more distress over here on this lower right hand side. So I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to mirror it or flip it horizontally so that I get more of that distress on this side over here. So I'm just going to move this around until it looks the way I want it to look. I want more distress over here on this part. I've got some distress all over. So yeah, I think I might stretch this out just a little bit on this side. And I guess because it's got so much going on in here, it does take just a little bit for it to move. So you just have to be patient. All right, so I think I'm good with that. I'm going to click off of that. The next thing, you're going to click on the baseball. And you can tell there that I've clicked on the baseball because the square around my baseball is turned where I had rotated the baseball. Okay, now I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to click on my background. And now you can see that both the baseball and the background are selected. Now I'm going to go over here to my modify tool, which is the rectangle and the circle kind of intersecting. And there are two different ways you can do this. I'm actually going to show you both. The first way is you just click on subtract. And it does take just a few a few seconds to do this. You've got a lot of little teeny tiny pieces, so it takes a while to do it. I leave my my mouse hovering over the subtract button. That's just kind of an indicator to me that it's still working. My patience is not real long, so sometimes I expect it to be instantaneous, but you can see that it popped up the little processing box and it'll show you when it starts going. So now we're at zero percent but it should go pretty quickly now that we've got that. Well, all right, there we go. So now it's at a hundred percent almost finished and there you have it you can see that you've got a distressed baseball but the background went away so there is another way to do that and I'm going to show you that as well also um, a shortcut that I don't know if everybody's aware of if you hit control and then Z as in zebra it will undo the last thing that you did. So I'm going to hit control and, and hold control and hit Z. It's going to put that right back just where it was. So now I'm going to show you the second way. I'm going to click on my modify panel. Don't know where my modify panel went. Let's see. There we go. And I'm going to do subtract all. Now this will take a little longer than just subtract. And as you can see right there, it says subtracts areas of shapes obscured by other shapes. So this does take just another minute longer than the other the other way. So we're just going to give that a minute to work. And my Silhouette Studio has been acting crazy today. I'm just hoping I can get through this video. So there's the little blue 
spinner it lets you know that it's still working all right so I'm gonna click over here I'm gonna move my background out of the way and there we have the distress baseball but we also still have our background so if we wanted to distress something else so I'm gonna change that to white the red lines to white and then usually if I'm trying to make a design and I want to give somebody a preview of, of what it's going to look like what I'll do is I'll put it on a color close to the color that they're going to have the design on in this case it was going on a blue shirt so I'm just going to draw a square I'm going to make it blue I'm going to right click on it and send it back and that's how your baseball would look on a blue shirt at once you distressed it. Okay, so I'm going to draw a square around both of these and just move them out of the way. Now I'm going to show you basically it's the same thing if you want to distress some text. You want to have kind of a heavier, thicker text. So I'm going to go up here and pick red for my text. I think I'm going to use this Accord Heavy. And I'm just going to type Braves. Let me just click on that so that I can enlarge it so you can see better. Same thing, I'm going to bring my distress over here. I'm going to right click and bring it to front. And then that will let me know where the distress is going to be. Okay? So once again, you just move it around till it's where you want it to be. And you can rotate it, you can stretch it out, you can make it smaller. Whoops. I'm going to try to rotate this just a little bit. Maybe stretch it out some. I just want to make sure I'm getting some distress on each letter. And I'm not really loving that large area that's right there under the A. Or under the S right there. So I'm just trying to stretch that out some and I'll play with it and move it around till I get the look of distress that I that I want. All right. I think I might be happy with that. I think I'm going to push this down just a little bit. To get just a little bit more down on that R. And I apologize, I don't know what the issue is with the lag in the movement. Alright, so I'm going to click off of that. I'm going to click on the text. And you can see that just the text has a square around it right now. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to click on my distress. Now everything's selected. I'm going to go back over here to the modify panel and I'm going to do this time I'm just going to do subtract because I'm not going to need that again. So I'm just going to subtract. That takes, that subtracts the thing that's on the in the front from the thing that's behind it. So let's give that just a minute to work here. And then you'll be able to see how the text looks distressed. I don't really have any great wonderful weeding trick for this. I do know that 
I got a pin pin from 651 Vinyl, and that was definitely a game changer. A lifesaver game changer for me when I was weeding the distressed stuff. It gets every little teeny tiny piece that you can see. Um, so you can find that at 651vinyl.com. Um, it's listed under the tool section. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I'm just a very satisfied customer. They've got the best vinyl prices, the best customer service, and the fastest shipping that I, I believe I've ever dealt with. So go out there and check them out. They also have a 651 uh, vinyl page on Facebook, Facebook group, um, if you're into vinyl crafting. So check them out, and I know you won't be disappointed. So there we have it. It's not real distressed. And had I done subtract all, I still would have had my background there and I could have overlaid it again and done some more distressing. But that gives you the basics right there on how to do that. So thank you for coming and watching my tutorial. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. Also click on the bell so you'll get notifications when I upload new videos. And please stop back by and check out my other videos. Have a great day.